That's a big rock, but look at how awesome it is. It's got the natural high spot over yep. there. It actually looks like water's already eroded this part away. Mm -hmm. It's kind of slowly taking it away. So this is gonna be amazing in a stream like this. You can tell that rock, yeah. as flat as it is, it's still meant to stand up. Yep. This is not one that in nature was laying like this. It was definitely laying more like that. Mm -hmm. And so keeping it thin and tall opens up a lot of real estate inside the pond. Yeah. Fish have that much more room. This one, though you can tell, stays flat. It's just the nature of it. When you say that, I know what you mean, but explain like when the characteristics of the rock. All right, so we've got a little bit of reinforcements. We've got Luis over here, Jack. We are back after a weekend. We got a little bit of rain last night. You haven't seen much measurable progress other than getting the reservoir in. We did bring out some of these flow cell drainage panels that we are going to put over top of the reservoir just to help beef up the support on top of the aqua blocks, as well as provide a little bit of extra mechanical filtration because of the layout of these and because of the size of the boulders we have over here that we're gonna be setting on top. So we're just beefing it up a little bit. We also have some extra people today. So you've got the reinforcements over here other than Luis. We got some new people. Who do we got over here? Rigate, <laughs> Joe and Jenny from Nature's Waterscape from California. Awesome. And Joe, you've been here for a week now, right? Or four or five days. Now you're over here with us and you're exactly here to help us see it through. Help you out, see it through, and always learn. And who is this again? The better half, Jenny. I'm the boss. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, good. So Brian and I have a new boss. Yeah. So that's nice. good. <laughs> what can I do? <laughs> so glad some to have ama some amazing rocks showed up, huh, Chris? Yes. Awesome. Well, and we showed up earlier in the video coming off and like, I think Moose was saying that the guys at the yard said that's a 6,000 pound pallet. <laughs> like the wheels were, were starting to yeah. ear. Well, we'll see if this machine can handle it then. I, right? think, I think it's got it. That's a big rock. But look at how awesome it is. It's got the natural high spot over yep. there. It actually looks like water's already eroded this part away. Mm -hmm. It's kind of slowly taking it away. So this is going to be amazing in a stream like this. And so if you notice the rocks that have been picked out, a lot of them have more of that flat lead rock type look especially the second load that's coming and it's because the project that we're doing is more of this deep stream system yep so unlike flat. the last one we did yeah you know, crashing waterfalls down a nine foot slope yeah this is basically a level backyard and so we want to really twist and turn this stream a lot and then use more of this lead rock type stuff that's great and then some of the other ones that are a little taller the thought was this one section of pond mm -hmm. he really wants that thing to be three feet deep so i tried to find stones that were at least two two and a half feet deep so you weren't stacking boulders you sure dropping one big rock at a time and there's some that are super thin that we'll be able to stand up maybe and you can tell that rock yeah as flat as it is it's still meant to stand up yep this is not one that in nature was laying like this it was definitely laying more like that mm -hmm. and so keeping it thin and tall opens up a lot of real estate inside the pond yeah fish have that much more room this one though you can tell stays flat that's just the nature of it when you say that i know what you mean but explain like when the characteristics of the rock when I say this one's meant to stay flat, you have all the moss and lichens around there. Flat rocks, like if you took, that's related to a piece of flagstone. You would never take a piece of flagstone, like a two inch, three inch piece of flagstone, and stand it upright. At the quarry, that's not how it came. It came out of the quarry flat and layered. And when they peeled it away, they peel away these big flat pieces. This stuff is sitting in hillsides and mountainsides, and so they pluck them out individually. It's not a quarried stone. They pluck it out of the woods and stuff. You can even see on here, this is probably the old dirt line mm -hmm. right in here this is the part of the stone that was exposed you can see that it was sitting flat in nature so we just want to put it back the way it came out of nature back into our system the same way the other nice thing about some of these flat rocks we call them destination boulders these are the type of rocks when you put them into the edge everybody's going to come and want to stand on the side of it when i put a destination boulder i always think of doing this or a grandchild being able to do this and when i do it one more when I, <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. That's right. When I do that 360, that means it's safe to stand on it. You wouldn't take a destination boulder, you know, 24 inches wide and expect a three-year-old to be able to spin around on there. Or even necessarily like a round rock, right? Like some of these, these yeah. flatter pieces for people to, to walk on, stand on, sit on. They're just not comfortable. Yeah, there's a lot of destination boulders in this, yeah. in this truckload, but wait but, till you see the next truckload. Like this one here, you'll have a blast with this one. It's actually meant, like you could flatten this one off and create a destination boulder, yeah. or you could 
you can leave it the way it's coming like with this the high and side let, and let water roll up over yeah. here because we have a high side on the back it becomes a natural area for us to bring our edges up to and our liner up higher <laughs> than mm -hmm. water level and it'll look so good to have water kind of crest up on top of this yeah. rock a little bit i told i was telling jim though the owner you know you still like your job when you're looking at boulders and you're like gosh how can i get that one to my house and where would i put it and like there's so many cool rocks here this is going to be an awesome project all oh, the reason i know it's going to be an awesome project is because look at his yard like his yard is awesome like really really cool plant material mm -hmm. nothing's normal everything's more of a specimen type plant and you can tell he enjoys it so he's going to be out here tinkering with this thing mm -hmm. all the time he, in fact today I mean, it's early in the morning we're here at 7 30 and he's like hey brian if you guys could finish like that section over there then i could work right behind you and start doing landscaping and everything else so you never get homeowners that excited to work right behind them it's almost like he went from like a japanese maple addiction and then that kind of petered out and then got into the specimen conifers yep. so he's even some of his perennials are you know he's got some different stuff a little unique pretty like common staple type stuff but everything complements each other you can tell he put some thought into grabbing plants before he just goes out and buys them that makes us feel good because it gives us some extra assurance knowing that it'll be well taken care of yeah, when we're 100%. done so all right all right so like i said we're gonna put these flow cell panels in and then um and then we're gonna start strapping some boulders we'll work on the overflow area and make some measurable progress today so good deal a quick progress update. Jack's working on his dance moves while Joe and Luis are over here scraping out some of the soil so that we can get this stone. This is one of those big rocks that we showed earlier in the video. Probably a good ton and a half ton slab and it is going to act as our frame rock and partially our spill stone. So you can see it's got these, I don't know if they're what we call them, striations or the formation of the rock where it's almost like water has already eroded a lot of this stuff away. So we're going to try and set this thing back in here using that corner as the high point and try and get some water to come off of this and what this is also doing is this is going to act as a destination boulder for the grandkids Jim his wife Phyllis and anybody else that comes out here just something to kind of hop around on and stand on and kind of look over the top of everything but we're trying to utilize the characteristics of the rock to our advantage as well as the high point to help frame out that waterfalls and should be pretty slick by the time but this is where doing the due diligence that we always talk about so you can see we dry set the rock first by pulling the liner back and then digging out where we needed it to go the challenge that we were running into or i guess what we were taking into consideration also is the water level versus where we expected water to come off of this rock so we're going to sling it up get it over there and see i'm going to turn the camera over to ed and he will explain it to you because i'm going to hop in the machine and drop it in for him so ed when you get this thing i didn't even introduce you on the video yet did i oh, okay. son of a gun <laughs> i mean a man who needs no introduction all right so we have ed out here for a majority of the week helping us out on this project Yep. getting kind of caught back up after it was just Jack attacking myself. So our goal with this, because it's such a large square and we're trying to create more of a naturalistic shape, kind of a long meandering stream system, we're kind of going in and out of the edge of the liner. So some areas we're going to cut outside the liner, other areas we're actually going to backfill and bury it. So the back corner of these aqua box is actually all the way over here where the shovel's at. So all that, we had extra liner. So whenever we're designing and building on a project of this scale, we're going to have extra rubber liner so we could take it we can pull it in and then we can fill that area with soil so it gives us a lot of design flexibility but also i just want to point out here some of the strapping techniques working with some of these large slabs a little bit of a challenge just because you have to get it balanced out properly otherwise that stone will not get set exactly the way you want it so what chris is doing right now is just kind of playing around with the different shape. I know he's got a visual that he's been working off of. And as designers and builders, we're always playing around with different configurations for the stone. You have that mental image of what you're trying to achieve. So I'm following his lead, to try to help him design and build this waterfall that's gonna be coming in here. This, he was talking about setting this up as a destination, right, Chris, for the grandkids? Yeah, thinking about it that way, it's just a big flat slab, but the way the rock is, it's, 
it's almost like it's already had water kind of running and eroding away. So mm -hmm. I was, what I was hoping was to keep this as the high spot. And then, you know, we're only gonna have a little six inch tall waterfall in mm -hmm. through here. And, and maybe if we can do a V or something where we block it up just to get that water to maybe to crust somewhere at this height while all that's high and just using the natural formation of the rock to our advantage. So I love it. I think you're absolutely right. You know, with the way those layers are in there with that sandstone, it's, it's totally been eroded by flowing water. Yeah. So I think it's just gonna be a natural fit. I love it.